So let me ask the the obvious question: Why pinpoint specifically black participants? Like, what what's the end goal? So the, the long story is that when I started off my grad school work, I worked in Gullah Geechee communities in South Carolina. Oh, okay. Hey, man. Wow. Yeah, I love them. And I wrote a paper about them being the progenitor African American group. So ultimately, you know, the way colonialism worked, and they were here first. They were the first group. A lot of times we give, you know, rise to Mississippi and Louisiana. That came later. The Gullah community really cultivated black culture for all of us, and they were able to hold on to it because they were isolated a lot of the time. They didn't spend a lot of time having to deal with certain, certain traumas. I mean, they had them, but it was less time based on the heat, based on the islands, based on the mosquitoes. They couldn't come out there a lot. So long story short, that's how I started wanting to work with black communities because I saw that we, we really lacked in literature. But can, I, can I go back for a mm-hmm. second? Just for a, a historical, I think, I think it's, it's an important part of why the, the Geechee have been able to keep their, you know, from, from the beginning, been able to hold on to their. So the people you're talking about, right, are the slave owners, right, who could not come to, to these plantations because of the heat, because of the mosquito, all of the things that they are not built for. So there was a certain level of, uh, for lack of a better word, autonomy. Yeah. Though that sounds like a, a, a really weird word to use right. during use that. During slavery. But there was, uh, there was that, uh, because they were not being policed by their slave owners, there was a lot of freedom that they had to be able to hold on to, to certain aspects of the culture. Absolutely. Yeah, right. And yeah, you know, it's that. interesting, if you go online, and you look at some of the work, like weaving of baskets that they do today, and then you go back to, you know, uh, let's see, you know, the 1800s and the weaving of baskets that they did in Ghana, it's the exact same weaving. It's the exact same. I mean, they really were able to hold on to their culture in a different way, which probably makes them a really good test group and that they all kind of are still amongst themselves. Right. So uh, genetically, usually they will have a upward of 90% African alleles, so African ancestry, they hold on to it more, which most African Americans range about 78 to 80s. They will have about 90% African uh, genetics. In addition, the basket weaving was because they were rice farmers, which is what you would find on the Windward Coast as well. So slavery was a very, very deliberate act, and so they were brought to the South Carolina because of the rice. And then when the cotton gin boomed, we moved from there to the other states. Yeah, And it's a shame because when we think about South Carolina rice, I think I heard somebody say that, we know that, but the people who own those rice companies, they don't look like us. Mm-hmm. But we were the ones who, when we came over, we were brought over for that purpose in order to, uh, what is the exact word? How do you harvest rice? Harvest. Is it, har- okay, harvest. you harvest it. it yeah, yeah you, har- you know, harvest the rice. But it's very interesting, too, because for some reason, and I know you must know the answer to this, so it's called the stroke belt down there. Now, is that, explain to me why is it that when we think about even that particular group of people in the Gullah Islands, or even black folks in general in America, why are the strokes hitting us so much? So the the stroke belt is not particular to one race, actually, white populations really struggle with stroke in the same area. So you can overlay it, right? Stroke belt, Bible belt, black belt, sometimes it's called that. But it's mostly in the South, we have a lack of walkability in our neighborhoods or in our cities. The way we eat in, in, as a whole is a little bit different, a little bit more decadent, you know? Mm-hmm. And what would you say? Rich. Rich, <laughs> there you go. Those things really overlay um, <laughs> Tony's. Those things really overlay to um, allow things like stroke and cardiovascular disease to persist. So it's a little bit more than just we live there. Thank you for tuning in to Nah, Not All Hood. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Join the conversation, comrades. Thanks a lot.